Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we will be starting the much requested custom cart page tutorial series. Uh, and in this first episode, we are going to start off by building our custom cart page and specifically the display for the different line items so that we have a repeater which displays and reflects the actual line items that have been added to the user's cart. So if you want to learn how to do all that and more, let's get started. Okay, so for today, I'm starting off with a completely blank Wix website. The only two things that I've done is that I've installed the Wix stores app. Uh, so if you haven't done so yet on your site, you'll just go over here to add apps. And then once you open up the app store, you can just search here for Wix stores and go ahead and install this app right over here. Um, after you've done that, your site should look pretty much like this. You'll have a few default pages installed over here. Uh, including the original cart page, which we're going to be using for inspiration uh, on this site. And the other thing that I've done is I've added in a menu just for some easier navigation so we can kind of hop to the shop and back. Um, so that's really all I've added here. These two elements are added uh, automatically once you add in Wix stores. So you'll get the Wix members app installed as well. And you'll also get the cart icon up here on top and you can move these around and put them wherever you like. Another thing that I want to point out before we get started is that everything that I'm showing you here today, even though it is inside the Wix editor or the classic Wix editor, you can implement all of the code that I'm going to show you in Wix Studio as well. So the APIs are the same. Uh, some of the design interface might look differently, but since we're designing our own cart on a blank canvas, I think overall it would not be too hard for you to implement this tutorial uh, on Wix Studio as well. So don't kind of say, oh, I don't understand what's going on. This doesn't look like my site at all. If you're using Wix Studio, just try and focus on the code and the functionality and implement those things uh, on your website. Another thing I recommend getting ready as we hop into this tutorial is the documentation. Uh, so this is the documentation for Wix Ecom backend, and this is going to become our best friend throughout this series. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of these different APIs, which are related to the Wix stores, so the cart and the checkout uh, and events and stuff like that. Uh, so we're going to really be dealing with all of this stuff. So I, I do recommend uh, having this documentation open uh, as we follow along. And now that we have that background, Let's hop in and actually get started with our custom cart. So in order to build our custom cart, we're going to need to add a new page to our website that we're going to build the cart on. So I'm going to do that by going right over here to pages and menu. And I'm going to go to site menu and add a new page. OK, right up here on top. And once I add in this page, I'm just going to add in a blank page. And we're going to really be starting completely from scratch here. And I'm going to call this our custom cart page. And I'm just going to make sure here that the URL here in SEO basics, I'm going to make sure that our URL indeed says custom cart, like you can see right over here. Awesome. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and make my menu a little wider just so it doesn't look weird. And then I'm going to go and publish the site and click view site. And this is because I want to go ahead and open up the native Wix cart page in order to use it as a reference for our custom cart page. And this is mostly because I want to make sure that we cover our bases in terms of implementing all of the basic functionality that the Wix cart page has. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to need to go ahead to my shop. And these are just the products that come default with Wix stores. So if you already have your store populated, you should see your own products here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add two products to the cart. So I added in one and I'm going to go back and add in one more. And I, this one, I need to pick a certain option. So I'm going to pick the white bag and now I'm going to go ahead and view cart. And this is what we're going to be using here now as our reference. And we can see here the key elements of a cart page. So one is this repeater or repeating element which displays the products in the cart 
and each of these products has certain capabilities, and this is going to be our focus for today. Uh, but we see that there are also several other elements, such as the order summary and promotion codes and notes, and those are all going to be topics for some of our uh, later videos in this series. Uh, so as I said, we're going to be focusing, first of all, on this My Cart. And these are the products that are actually in the cart. And in order to facilitate this, we're going to want to add a repeater to our page and add in all of these individual items that you see here, all these individual elements. So we're going to have an image and we're going to have the name of the product. We're going to have price. Uh, we're going to have an option to see the different options that the person selected. Uh, we're going to have the option to either remove or add quantity. And we're going to have uh, the individual uh, item price or no, sorry, this is the individual price. And this is the total one, I think. Let's check that out by adding one more. Yeah, so this one's the total and this is the individual price. Obviously, the whole point of building out your own custom card is that you can go ahead and play around with these things. So you don't have to do it exactly like it is here. But I just want to make sure that I cover and explain how to add the functionality that's here so you can decide how you want to implement and what you want to implement. So let me head back over to our editor. And as I said, we're going to start out by adding in a repeater. So I'm going to go over here and add elements. And I'm going to go and look for a list element over here. And from these repeaters, I'm just going to add in a blank repeater. So something like this. And this is where we're going to be displaying uh, those actual products. For some reason, it added it into my header, which is not what I wanted to do at all. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste it over here and adjust my header set height back to normal. OK. So here we've added in a repeater that we're going to display our products in. And I'm going to make it just a little bit. I'm going to make it about half the screen size to match what we have in the original cart. And again, this is where you can go ahead and get funky. Uh, this is where you're doing the customization. So if your customization is primarily for design purposes, then, you know, let it go and uh, do whatever you want here in terms of design. I'm going to try and make the design look somewhat nice, but I'm not going to like, that's not the point of this tutorial. I'm mainly focusing here on functionality. Um, so let's add in some of the other elements that we know we need here in this repeater. So I'm going to add in an image. Uh, let me get over here, image. And I'm just going to choose one of these default images. And I'm going to crop it to be a square. So let's just make width and height about the same. There we go. And I'm going to make it a little smaller just so we can put it right over here. OK, so that's the image. And another thing that we wanted is text. And this is going to be for the uh, product name. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the value of that data. So what exactly that data is supposed to represent or what this text box is supposed to represent, because obviously this is going to change per product. So it's not actually going to show whatever text I put in here now. It's going to show the text of the actual product. So I'm just going to write here uh, product name. OK, inside of curly brackets, that's how I like to indicate that something is later going to be populated by data. And you can really write anything you want here because it's just going to change. So you can put that right over there. And I'm going to add in another element for the individual price. So I'm going to call this unit price. And I'm going to put this right over there. And if this part is boring you, you can feel free to skip ahead to where I actually start writing code. But I do want to show this process just for the people who might need a little assistance with this part as well. Uh, so I put in the unit price here as well. I'm going to put in another uh, text here for the uh, product options. And I'm going to put that, let's say, right over here. And I'm going to put in a text input. 
and that input is going to be for the purpose of changing the quantity. So if we just head back to our custom cart, we can see here that we have two buttons, so one for adding and one for subtracting, but I could also just select the number here and let's say put five instead. Uh, so I want to give all of that functionality inside of our new cart, so we're gonna need also a text input and also plus and minus buttons. So let me head back over here. I'm going to put in a text input. Let me just go and look for input. And if you don't see input initially, okay, like I don't see input now here, then it could be that's because we don't have dev mode on. Okay, so we're gonna go on over here to dev mode. Um, and this is something we were gonna do later on anyways, but let's do it now because we want our input. And I'm just gonna turn on dev mode. And this is essentially what's gonna allow us to add Velo code to our website, for those of you who are not familiar. Uh, but it also kind of unlocks some hidden features within the editor that technically don't necessarily need code, but are just kind of more advanced use cases. So Wix kind of hides them initially for users that they think won't be able to utilize them properly. Um, so now if we go ahead and go back to add elements, then we should see over here input. Okay, right over here. And what we could do now is just grab a plain text input. And I'm gonna put that right in here. And I'm gonna do some styling of this uh, in a moment, but let's add in our button elements. So we know that we want two buttons and let's add something like a little more iconic. So I'm gonna add this small button here with an icon and I'm just gonna copy paste it and add another one on the other side again nothing is styled yet stop judging uh, and then i'm going to add in the total price so let's add in that as well so i'm going to go here to text and let's add in not that huge title <laughs> let's add in a text element that will be for our total price so i'm just going to change the name here to total price make it a little smaller and put that right over here let's say on the bottom right and one last thing that we need to add in to make this uh, cart identical to the one uh, that we have in wix in terms of functionality is this remove button which essentially will remove an item from the cart completely when it's clicked so let me go ahead and add in another, one more last button. And let's find a button, sorry, over here, button. And let's add in, let's say, a button like this, which will be our remove from cart button. And with that, we have added in all of the different elements that we need, at least for this part of the cart. So the products display. And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and go into some design time and I'll be back once I have my slightly nicer cart. Okay, so I am back with my slightly better looking cart design. I know it's still not amazing, but it's a little better. Uh, and now what we're essentially going to do is we're going to populate this repeater with the items from the cart. And the way we're gonna do that is with our API. Uh, so if you take a look here inside of the Wix Ecom backend API, we have this part called current cart, okay? And this gives us several tools for interacting with our current cart. And the first one that we're gonna be using is this one right over here, which is get current cart. And when we call this API, then essentially we will get all of the items in the cart and all of the data pertaining to that specific cart that the user currently has active on the site. And it's important to note that all of these APIs are for the backend. So we're gonna to have to write our code to get the cart in the back end of the website and then import that into the front end of our website. So in order to do that, let's head over to our editor. And I'm gonna go over here to public and back end, which we gained access to when we enabled Velo through dev mode. And I'm gonna go over here to back end and I'm going to add in a new web module. Okay, right over here. And I'm going to call this cart. And here it comes with some boilerplate code that just kind of explains a bit about how Wix backend works. I'm going to select 
all of that and go ahead and remove it. And then I'm going to go to our API and I'm going to go and copy this boilerplate code over here. And I'm going to paste it inside of the cart page here inside of the editor. So what this gives us is a basic use case of current cart. So first of all, we have the actual backend code. And then here we have code, which is the page code, uh, which is technically the code that we would want to use on our front end. And if we scroll down even more, then we have an example of the data that we'll get back once we actually get a current cart. Uh, so you can see here that there's data uh, about the cart itself. So there's the ID of the cart. And then we go into this part, which is the line items, which is really kind of the heart of our cart, which is those products that are currently inside of the cart. And we can see that for each of them, we have information about it, such as the product name, uh, the pricing, etc. And it's quite detailed information that we have here. Um, there's also some other kind of metadata pertaining to the cart that we have here, such as the currency of the cart, buyer info and stuff like that. That's all going to be for um, a little later on. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to get rid of this page code because we're going to write that ourselves on the front end. And I'm going to do a little minor editing of this um, back end code that we have over here. And you'll notice um, for starters, the name of this uh, function. So I'm just going to call it get cart instead of whatever they had over there. Uh, another issue that we have here is that we have this error. And that's because they named this variable and the package the same thing. Uh, so both of them are current cart. So the editor is kind of getting a little confused of which one, which current cart are you talking about? So I'm just going to change this to be plain old cart. And that should deal with our error. And we're going to return this cart. And if there's an error, we'll catch uh, the error right over here. And that will be all. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to change it. Sorry, I'm just going to change this to say again cart because we want to return essentially this cart that we get back from current cart, which should be all of this data that we have over here for that specific cart. Uh, so now that we've built out our back end function, we can actually go and implement this uh, in our front end. So let me just go ahead and zoom out and I'm going to go to our custom cart page. And I'm going to get rid here as well of this boilerplate code. And I'm going to start off by importing import. Let me zoom in here. So I'm going to import get cart from backend slash cart. Okay, so essentially that function that we just copied slash built from Wix, uh, I'm going to import that over here. And then I'm going to build another function over here, which is going to get that cart and pass it into the repeater. So I'm going to call this function uh, async function. And it's going to be called populate cart items. Let's call it like that. Uh, and you can call it whatever you want, as long as you kind of understand what the function does. Uh, and the reason I'm making it an async function is because we're getting the cart from the back end and Pretty much whenever you get something from the back end, it's going to be asynchronous, especially if Wix is involved and we know that the back end function is an asynchronous function as well. What does asynchronous mean? It just means that it's an action that is going to take some time. We don't know how long, so we need our code to know that and to wait for that information to come to us. Uh, so that's what asynchronous is in a nutshell. And what we're going to do inside of this uh, function is we're going to say const cart equals to await. That's another part of kind of waiting for that information. And we're going to say get cart. So essentially, we should have all our cart info stored in this cart variable. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to extract the line items, because that's what we're going to be passing here to the cart items uh, repeater. So I'm going to call this uh, const line items. And that's going to be equal to our cart. And once we have those line items, we're going to assign them to our repeater. And in order to do that, let's go ahead and do some naming inside of the editor. So I'm going to select first 
our repeater. And I'm going to go over here on the bottom right in order to name it. And let's call this line items repeater. And let's also, while we're doing some naming, let's go ahead and name all the rest of the elements that we have in here. Um, and I'm going to try and name them based on the similarity to the actual data that we're going to get back from the cart. So if I just take a peek over here at the cart, uh, so let's take a look and see if we can see what the media is called. So we have buyer info. Let me see if I could find the media. I don't see it over here. Let's see if I can find it. Bear with me. Okay, so here we have image. Okay, so that's what it's called here. So that's what I'm going to call it inside of my cart as well. Um, so let's go back to our editor and I'm just going to select this and I'm going to call it, it's already called image one. So all I need to do is go ahead and get rid of that one right over there. And here we have the uh, product name. Okay, so let's see what that's called inside of our cart. And again, this is not something that you necessarily need to do for it to work. Uh, it's just better, in my opinion, to have the names lined up as much as possible. Otherwise, you start confusing yourself because you have different names for essentially the same thing. Uh, so here we have um, product name. So that's what it's called over here. So let's call it the same thing um, on our page as well. So I'm going to select here product name. And let's change this to product name right over here. And let's see, what's the next one that we want to do? So we have the price and we have the full price. Yeah, so I think price and full price is like unit price and and full price. It's a little hard to tell because in this example, there's only one item that they have here inside. Let me see quantity. Oh, no, quantity three. So let's see if they have quantity three, then here we have price is 10 full price is 10. Subtotal, subtotal. So the sub, I think that's the subtotal of the card, though. So for that, we'll probably just have to take this um, this price and multiply it by three, I think, by the quantity, essentially. You know what? This is a good time to check out the documentation. So let's go over here to get current cart. And here, essentially, we can take a look at each one of those properties and see what their actual uh, value is based on an explanation that Wix provides. So if we go and let's take a look here at the line items. And let's see, item price. So full price is the price before catalog defined discount. Okay, so it's a single line item price before there was any kind of discount. Whereas just the regular price would be um, price item price after catalog discount. Okay, so price before discounts after catalog defined discounts. So there's lots of different <laughs> there's lots of different uh, discounts that you can have here uh, inside of the uh, Wix Ecom backend. So essentially, what we're going to be displaying at least initially is this uh, price, so the item price after catalog defined discount and line item discounts. Okay, so that's the price that I'm going to want to display. And let's go ahead. Whoops, we were in the middle of naming everything over here. So for unit price, I'm going to change this to be just price. And for our options, I'm going to just call this product options. And here for this, we didn't have a specific name inside of the line item. So I'm going to call this total price. And here, these don't correspond to specific properties inside of our line item. So I'm just going to name this 
quantity input. And I'm going to name this add quantity button. And I'm going to call this button here on the on the left sub quantity button. So like for subtracting from our quantity. And I'm going to call this last button here on top, our remove from cart button. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've essentially named all of our elements by giving them IDs that we can interact with using the Velo code. So let's hop back into our code editor here on the bottom. And we got our line items. And now that I've given my repeater a name, I can essentially assign the data from our line items to the repeater. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to select our line items repeater. And I'm going to say dot data equals to line items. And one thing that I need to double check when I'm assigning data to a repeater is that each item in the data has a unique ID. So let's double check that. I'm going to go here to the cart data. And if I go over here, then you can see here that each of the line items has a unique ID, which is underscore ID, and it's a string. So that's really great because that means that we don't need to do any additional manipulation to this data in order to allow a repeater to receive it. Uh, one last thing that we are going to need to do is we essentially need to set up the instructions that tell our repeater what to do once it gets the data. So we want to tell it, okay, take this part of the data and display it in the product name. Take this part of the data and display it in the unit price. So I'm going to start off with a very basic setup. I'm just going to attach the product name just so you can see what I'm talking about. And then we'll go ahead and attach all the rest. And the way we're going to be doing this is by setting up the on item ready for the repeater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that right over here inside of this function. So let me go ahead and zoom right in. And I'm going to select our repeater. So line items repeater dot on item ready. And then I'm going to say that for each item, we're going to also have some item data. And now I'm going to instruct what to do in each item with that item data. So I'm going to select the product name. And I'm going to say dot uh, text equals to item data dot product name dot. And here, if we go back to the actual data that we have here inside of the uh, coming back from the cart, we can see here that inside of product name, we have original and translated. So this you can kind of decide uh, what you prefer to display here to the user, uh, I'm going to display the original name. Okay, uh, and translated, I'm not even sure how it determines what the translated language is, maybe it's default English, I'm not so sure about that, to be honest, uh, it might be worth reading more about in the documentation. But I'm going to be safe. And I'm just going to go with the original, which is whatever you determined that your product name should be called. Uh, so I'm going to go over here and go back to our custom cart page. And here I'm going to say dot original. Okay, and one last mistake that you should not make, which I make almost every time I set up a repeater initially, is that here, this should not be dollar sign W, this should be dollar sign item. Uh, and that's basically a way of indicating that each item inside the repeater needs to behave a little differently. Uh, because each one is going to have its own unique data. If I would use dollar sign W, the whole repeater would just display the data of the first item, which is obviously not what we want. So now that I have created this lovely function, which gets our cart and populates our repeater, I'm just going to go ahead over here and make sure to call it in the on ready function. So I'm going to say here populate cart items. And now we're ready to do some testing. So I'm going to go ahead and publish the site. 
And this is something that we won't be able to test uh, in preview mode because essentially we need to have items inside of the cart in order to test that this is working. And that's not something that we can do in preview mode to the best of my knowledge. Uh, so we're gonna go and head back to our live site. And I'm gonna open up our custom cart in a new tab. And now you can see here, so we have two items in our cart and they're both called I'm in product, but I think that might be just because that is the actual name uh, of these products that Wix set up. They might all be called I'm a product. Um, so let's go ahead and set up some of the other elements here just that we can kind of see how these two products are essentially different from each other. So let's go and um, head back into our editor. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to set up the rest of these. So let's start here with the image. So I'm going to say that, hop right back over here into the code. And I'm going to say that item image dot source equals to item data dot image. And I'm going to select our price, so item price. And here I need two bits of information because I need to have also our currency and also the actual price. So let's take a look and see what kind of data we have here uh, inside the cart for that. So if we want, we can just use actually this uh, formatted amount. Okay, so that's what I'm going to want to display here inside of my cart. Uh, and this, again, you can do like some manipulations to this if you want to manipulate uh, the way that this is displayed before it's displayed to the user. That's kind of the advantage of doing a custom cart. So you don't have to do everything exactly as I'm doing it, but these are the basic principles for setting it up in a very default manner. So I'm going to use the formatted amount. And whoops, let me hop back over to our custom cart code, zoom right in here, and we're going to select the item data dot formatted amount. Other stuff that we want to do here is the uh, full amount. So we'll have here item and let's select the uh, total price dot text. And I'm going to have that equal to and here we're going to need the currency and we're also going to need to do a calculation. So I'm going to put this inside of a template literal. And first, let's see how we can extract the currency from our cart. So I'm going to go here to our cart and let's see if I could find here currency. OK, so I see here the currency in um, like the three, the three letter notation for currency. I don't see the currency in terms of just the symbol. Okay, so like the euro symbol. So we'll talk later on about how we can get around that issue. For now, I'm just going to use this currency that we have over here. Okay, so this is at the top level of our cart. It's not inside of one of the line items. So that means I can go ahead and I can extract this currency right over here along with the line items at the top level. So that will get our currency. And another thing that we're going to want to do is have our quantity and our price. But inside of the price, we're going to want the amount. OK, so this amount over here. And we're also going to want to make sure that this amount uh, is a number. Uh, so here we have quantity and we have full price uh, dot. Sorry, we have price dot amount. So first of all, I just noticed that I made a mistake. So here in item data, this should be dot price dot formatted amount. And here what we're going to have is we're going to have our currency first. And then we're going to have our item data dot quantity times item data dot price dot amount. Okay, let me go over here so you could see what I'm actually writing. Item data uh, dot price dot amount. 
And let me just double check to make sure that's right. So yeah, dot price, dot amount. So the only thing I foresee that can go wrong here is if for some reason either quantity or amount is not actually a number format, but we could easily fix that in our code later on uh, in a debugging stage. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is I will display the quantity inside of our quantity input. So let me go over here. And I'm going to dollar sign item. And let's select our quantity input. And I'm going to say that dot value should be equal to item data dot quantity. And here I need to make sure that this is a string because our inputs can only take strings. So I'm going to convert it to a string just to be extra cautious and make sure that it's the right data type. So this is looking pretty good. So I'm ready to do some additional testing and I'm going to go ahead and publish the site. And site is published and let's refresh this page with our custom cart and see how it's looking. Okay, so we see here that we have the product uh, images showing now, we have the individual prices showing, we have the full price showing, so like the total, so that's 85 times 5, which we can see here as well inside of our input. Okay, so that is how to display the basic parts of the cart inside of our cart repeater. And in the next episode, we'll be talking about some of the more advanced things, such as being able to add and subtract quantity, how to display product options, how to remove from cart, etc. Okay, so this is our code review, where I go over all the code that we wrote during this episode, and just make sure that the logic and flow is clear. So first of all, what we did is we created our new cart.jsw module in the backend, and we pasted in some code from Wix that imports the current cart from the Wix Ecom backend API. And then we created this function, which essentially gets the cart. And it does that by retrieving the cart through the API and just returning it from the function. And we can now, using this export, import this cart on our front end. And if we go to the front end code, which is on our custom cart page, the first thing that we did is we imported this function from the back end, so from back end slash cart. And then we built this function over here, which serves the purpose of populating our line items repeater. And the way that it does that is first it gets the cart using the back end function. And once we have the cart, we are extracting the line items and the currency from the cart. Then we set up the on item ready for the repeater, which essentially gives instructions for how to populate this repeater once it receives data. And we selected each of the elements inside of the repeater and assigned them the specific data value from within our line items and using our currency as well. Finally, what we did is we assigned the data of the line items to our repeater in order to tell it, go ahead and populate and display all of these line items. Uh, so if you set up your code like this, then you should see that your custom cart page repeater should reflect the actual cart on your live site. So you can go ahead and try and remove and add items to your cart and play around with it and see how the actual repeater changes. Obviously, we haven't finished setting up this repeater completely, but we're going to tackle some of the more complex aspects of it in the next episode. Uh, so that's all for today. If you enjoyed this, uh, please don't forgive to forgive. To, please don't forget to give a like. Um, and if you have certain things that you know that you want to see in this series about custom car page, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm still building this series, so there's still room to show you how to do different cool things that you want, uh, except for just the basics, which we're definitely going to cover. And if you don't want to miss the next episode, then don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.